Fred, can you tell us about uh, who your inspirations are and who are some musicians that really make you smile? Huh. Mm. Um, my inspiration is my, are my children. Um, you know, as I watch my children grow and watch my grandchildren, I mean, I'm really inspired by, um, by them a lot. Um, so they're a huge inspiration and, and it's a huge source for hope for me. Um, um, musically, um, one the strongest influences in my life kind of growing up musically were uh, Nat King Cole. Um, and I got a chance to hear Nat King Cole sing when I was like seven years old. And I went to a went to an event with my mom and dad. <clears throat> it was actually the premiere of uh, Carmen Jones, which is uh, which is a uh, was an all black cast adaptation of the opera Carmen, um, and, it, and it starred uh, Harry Belafonte and uh, and Dorothy Dandridge, you know, two great black. Um, artists, and and um, in that particular evening, uh, the announcer said at the completion of the theater, at the completion of the movie, we're just going to take a short intermission because we have a surprise for you. And it turned out that Nat King Cole was in the New York, New Jersey area, and had agreed to come and do a concert. And so I kind of fell asleep on my dad's lap during that 15-minute intermission and woke up to the sound of an orchestra and and the announcer announcing Nat King Cole. And he came on the stage and just hearing him sing and seeing his presence and seeing the impact that he had on everybody around me, I kind of fell in love with with his style and who he was. And so I, I grew up listening to a lot of Nat King Cole. And I also, you know, from a performance standpoint of view, I was always kind of mesmerized by uh, Sammy Davis Jr. Um, and, um, and then uh, uh, Carmen McRae, uh, as a singer and musician, Carmen McRae, I really, I loved her voice. I loved her musicianship. I loved her phrasing. Um, so she was a she was a huge influence. Um, and uh, and Donny Hathaway, because um, Donny Hathaway was a kind of an R&B R and B singer who, you know, grew up started out in the church, and he just had this real dramatic sense of authenticity and depth. Um, so I would I would say that you know they really. Those folk kind of shaped my, when I would say, I never said I want to sound like, but I want to, I want to do what they do. You know, I want to be able to capture the essence of that. So, so yeah, Nat Cole and Carmen and Donnie. And then, and then Miles Davis, I was really influenced by Miles Davis, you know, his, his playing and also just, you know, kind of as he evolved through the years, through the fifties, through the sixties and through the seventies. And, you know, he was huge pioneer. You know, and he brought a lot of freshness to the world of jazz improvisation. So, those were um, those were some of my some of my strongest influences. And I've actually had the pleasure of um, seeing you create a song on the spot, and mm -hmm. I just that that's just shocking to me every time I see it. But how long did it take you to cultivate that skill of being able to create a song on the spot? I think I used, to, I've been making up songs or at least doing kind of what I call a, a melodic narrative all my life. You know, even as a child, I kind of did that. So I always kind of felt this freedom to just kind of let go what I was thinking. And in truth, the formal, sort of, the sort of formal presentation of doing what I call sound sculpture, it was inspired um, by the fact that there was a period of time in the late 80s and early 90s where you know you would be in a jazz club and people weren't listening to you it was like it was a jazz club because it was a jazz band playing but people were just kind of talking you know it was a scene it was a scene it wasn't it wasn't a showcase for the music you know so club owners would say yeah yeah you know we, we, we know we're a jazz club you know you come and hear jazz but you know the audience so i remember doing two things one time i was at this club in tampa and it was really noisy, it was really loud. So I held this note for a really, really long time. I just held this one note for a really, really long time. And the audience kept, they got quiet, they got quiet, they got, because sonically something was going on that like triggered their thing, right? 
And so I, I just held that note and the audience got completely quiet, right? And, that, and then we had their attention. So, you know, I took them, you know, and then I kind of did my thing. We took them through the, through the song. And so, um, I, I, so after that, I said, all right, you know, hey, you know, give me three words, you know, and somebody hollered out some words and I spontaneously created a song. And people were like into that. So I realized two things, people need to be engaged. And that was a very engaging thing. And like, so, so I lived with that for a little bit, just saying, man, how do I, how do I, how do I utilize that? And that's an ancient thing, you know, the ancient, I mean, you know, my teachers had kind of taught me about being in the moment, you know, be present, bring people, bring the music into the moment, into what's happening, engage people. So I, I talked to the cats in my band and I said, look, I want you to go to the library. I mean, I want you to go to the museum and I want you to just, look at the paintings and I want you to say to yourself, Hey, what would this painting sound like? What would those colors, what would that shape, what would it sound like? I said, you know, just, just think about what, what, you know, if you had to play that painting, what would it sound like? And I said, cause I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this concert in a couple of weeks and you know, it's going to be spontaneously creating from what people's words and images and stuff. So I did that. So they went, and, you know, and they said, all right, I did it. I did it. <laughs> I said, okay. So, the next, we did this concert, and um, and it was uh, it was actually in Tampa. It was actually in the uh, in the um, one of the small theaters at the Performing Arts Center, which was then called the Tampa Bay Performing Arts Center. It's called the Strat Center now. Um, um, and so I I handed out notepads, and I said, okay, you know, for the next hour and a half, we're just going we're, we're going to create sound sculpture. You know, you get you know, give me words, and then I'm just gonna we're going to create story. We're going to create textures, and we did that. And I mean. People wrote, you know, I, we had pages and pages and, and it was a really great experience and no preconceived notion. You know, I would read like five words and say to the band, like I'd say the piano player, okay. Like, um, like I, re I don't remember hardly any of them, but I do remember this one. Th there, was, um, there was the word ebony and there was the word dragon, right? And so, so I said to the piano player, I said, you know, what groove do you hear when you when you hear the word dragon so i said you know give me a dragon groove and so he you know he started to play and then the drummer came in and you know the band came in and i i i remember weaving this story about it being late at night and the moon was exceptionally bright on this one night and and uh, a young man and his dad were sitting in the living room and the light was so bright that it kind of shone through the window and it illuminated the house. And the little boy said, dad, look at how bright the moon is. He said, I know, come on, let's go out. You want to go outside so we can see it better? So they went outside into the backyard and they stood in the backyard and they could see this big, 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 beautiful moon. And it was, it was almost like the sun, it was so bright. And then all of a sudden, um, the dad, something crossed in front of the, in front of the um, uh, moon and the dad said, what was that? And the boy was like, no, no, no. And he said, no, no, no. I, I don't think it's not anything to be afraid of. And he said, come on, come on back. Let's see. And then more and more and more. And it turned out that as they watched the moon crossing in front of the moon were these beautiful ebony dragons, right? And I remember doing this song about ebony dragons. I wish I had recorded it because it was pretty kind of hip. That was years ago. So anyway, that began kind of a journey of, and the audience was engaged and it was so funny. Like at the end of the night, usually if you do a concert in a club or anywhere, people would come up and say, hey, you know, Fred, you know, my name is, you know, I just want to really thank you, you know, but come up and they'd say, hey, I'm, I'm Ebony. Hey, I'm Dragon, you know? So people, when they would come up and thank you, they, they'd say they were, they became whoever their name was. And so... I realized that there's this wonderful connection when you create together. Um, and that just encouraged me to, to continue to do that. And then, you know, a big part of the jazz improvisational thing, especially, you know, like being guided by my teachers from Africa, telling story is really an important thing. So I have a propensity to create story and just kind of tell story. Again, it's a, a way of connecting head and, and heart and, 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 and commonality. But, um, it was born initially out of what do I need? What do I need to do to get people back plugged into the bands? And you know, unless you're some major artist and you're doing a concert somewhere, people are paying a whole bunch of money to come see you. But it was in that context of here I am in a jazz club, but it's only a jazz club because we're playing jazz, no one's listening. 
And I remember early on that would happen. And what I would do is I would turn inward because I was angry or hurt. I would turn inward and I would start to improvise and I would kind of heal my feeling of being separated or being, you know, not being heard. I would heal it inwardly. I would just sing and improvise and just take, you know, take the music to different places that I hadn't taken it. And so the, the beauty in that was that it, it helped to expand my improvisational vocabulary, but it didn't, it didn't solve the disconnect. But when I found ways to do things that included the audience, it, it really you know, created a link um, that was very beneficial. And who are some young people that you are working with that we should be on the lookout for? Wow, that's a good question. I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not, one guy who, who I've been, I've known him probably since he was like nine or 10 years old. Who's a really great musician, and he's a, kind of an anthro, a, 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 a music and, and linguistic anthropologist. His name is Don Johnson. He lives here in St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, he's an amazing storyteller and musician. Um, I, he is a part of a group that I have called the Circle of Six, which are six folks who, five folks actually, who I've, I've tried to teach this tradition of melodic nar narrative, you know, kind of specifically. Um, Don and his, his wife, Sophia, is also part of the group. She's also a really amazing painter. And so she does music and writes story. But oftentimes when we, when the Circle of Six creates a program, she'll paint, she'll spontaneously paint. And she's amazing. No in regards to that. Uh, I feel like my mom probably went to one of the performances. I'm not really sure. I think she was talking about that. But yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you talk when you you did the gratitude service. You talked about um, your morning routine. Mm -hmm. So, what is your morning routine? Uh, my morning routine is the, you know, the minute that I arise. You know, before I do anything else. You know, I I acknowledge the breath of life again and thank the Creator for a new day and a new opportunity to to be on the journey and uh, ask to be as uh, receptive as I can possibly be and, and as of service as I can possibly be. Um, that's the most important thing that I do, I think, when I, when I rise. Um, um, at some point after I've kind of, uh, you know, showered and cleaned up, cleaned up and done things like that, I kind of then go into my breath practices. You know, the breath practice is a really, really important thing, you know, connecting to the breath. And sometimes I'll, I'll combine that by connecting to tone. Um, and then I'm kind of about my work and working day, you know, it's like my, my regimen is to try to be as engaged as I can to all that I talk about all the time. I mean, it's kind of a walking meditation. <laughs> I try to move through that and move into that. You know, I work at the Strat Center for the Performing Arts and I'm, I'm artist in residence there. And I'm also very involved with inclusion, diversity, equity, and accessibility. So I'm constantly creating you know, putting pieces together or, or, you know, creating works. My, my, my study, my formal study is in the theater, the musical theater. And I also trained for seven years with the National Mind Theater. So for seven years of my life, I didn't do any singing at all. I lived in the classical theatrical art form of classical pantomime. So it's a world of communicating without words. And I truly believe that through studying nonverbal communication and living in a world of gesture, facial gesture and movement and gesture, that it helped me to understand the power of sound more. I think I became a better singer through those years of nonverbally communicating so that when I went back to my approach to singing, my phrasing, it shifted because I understood silence. I understood space in a, in a, in a different way. But, you know, I try to kind of continually live in that first and foremost acknowledgement, acknowledging the gift, connecting to breath. Um, I try very much to be an observer, you know, and take, take kind of spiritual notes of what's going on around me um, and just have that be an in part, integral part of my day. And how many instruments do you play? Really, you know, voice is my first instrument. I play the African hand drums, and uh, and I play the West African uh, stringed uh, chordophone. So three instruments. Really. And what's your favorite one to play? Oh, 
wow. I don't have a favorite. Really. No favorite? I don't really have a favorite. You know, there are there are times when I'm really connected to playing with, playing and singing to the chordophone, but there are times when I'm just connected to playing the drum. And there are times when I'm just connected to the voice. So I don't really have a, uh, because I feel like they're tools, they're tools for connection and sounding. They're very divine instruments. So yeah, I don't really have a uh, favorite, no. Okay. And what is your favorite song to perform? Nature Boy, I guess. Nature Boy. There was a boy, a very strange enchanted boy. They say he traveled very far, very far over land and sea. A little shy and sad of eye, but very wise was he. And then one day, one magic day, he came my way. And as we spoke of many things, fools and kings this he said to me the greatest thing you'll ever learn is just to love and be loved in return i think that's my favorite song and what was your most profound experience being on stage So the most profound experience I had being on stage, I think was, um, I don't remember the year, but it was uh, on the 4th of July and it was in uh, Straub Park in downtown uh, St. Petersburg. It's 4th of July, so there were thousands of people in the park and hundreds of boats out in the, that inner harbor there you know, the North Shore Harbor. And it was just thousands and thousands of people. And it was a big day. And it was one of the best bands I ever played with. And, you know, we were out there on stage and we were just rocking it, right? We were really, really rocking it. All these thousands of people. But there were two people right down in front. I think I talked about this at the church. It was two, these two people right down in front. And, and they were arguing with each other. Like they were at odds with each other. So with all these thousands of people, the only people that I could really see and focus on were these two people because my thing was like, how with all of this energy and excitement, and all this joy going on, how could they be arguing? You know, how could they be at odds? And so there was a part of me that said, man, I, I just, I want to, I want to get them plugged in. It was like, I couldn't focus on anything but them with, with all of this joy and excitement and, and the music was killing it and we were really rocking. But I'm like, just constantly looking at this couple down there and they're like at each other's throats. So um, that went on for probably about 35, 40 minutes. And then I did the one thing that they say you shouldn't do outside. And that was like sing without music, just sing a cappella Cause you know, there's so much noise and stuff going on. But I did. I started to sing this song, um, and it, it was uh, it was a Bonnie Raitt song. I can't make you love me if you if you don't. Um, I started to sing that song, and as I started to sing that song, you know, and I was really kind of pouring my energy into this song because I wanted them to feel the possibility and the power of love. And so I sang, I sang, and then I opened my eyes, and they were looking at each other. They were looking into each other's eyes. And I continued to sing. I closed my eyes and I continued to sing. And I opened my eyes again and they had their, their arms wrapped around each other. You know what I mean? And they were kind of crying and holding each other and they turned and they looked at me. And in that moment, I realized that what I do is not about bringing attention to me. What I do and what I'm blessed to be able to do is to create joy and connection to others in others, in themselves and together to create a, a common wave of energy, of love, of heart, of beauty, of, of truth that connects us to our higher selves and brings us joy, you know? And so literally on that 4th of July, I remember walking off stage saying, wait a minute, man, there's way more to this than I ever really understood. This is not about just being good. This is not about you know, having people leave saying, man, 
where's his record? I want to buy his record. It's like people being able to to walk away from the experience and and have and have been moved and 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 have something happen inside of them or together. It was a really, really powerful moment for me. It really shifted my whole sense of the joy and the understanding that I could gain from recognizing that I have an opportunity that few people have, and that is to create transformation, to create inner feeling, to create joy, to create healing, to create a, a feeling of connectedness way, way inside that brings people together, not, not to bring their attention to me, but for me to be a vessel for them to feel the fullness of, of who they are. And that was a really, that was a really life changing thing for me. I think I, I approached doing music in a totally different way after that day. And I think for the better, because I think it expanded my opportunity and my understanding to give on so many, so many other levels. You know? I think that's really beautiful. It's touching my heart. I hope we're tearing up a little bit. But that actually <laughs> into my next question for you i know you're doing a lot of new things um and i know that you have some upcoming projects um if you can share those projects with us we would love to hear about them and also like you know what's your vision for the future with people Mm. so um projects that i'm working on are is a, a new project or at least a newly defined project um, that is titled um, The Artful Heart. And so The Artful Heart is kind of the sum total of what I've been talking to you about, you know, for the last hour or so. And and that is to really be committed to creating space where in really creative ways we come together and regain a sense of our heartful connection to each other. Um, our heartful connection to just life and living itself, um, to create space for dreaming and creating and learning and evolving in ways that take us back to a sense of communal fullness, you know. Um, and that I, I'm hoping to have that be kind of physical live events, um, also doing some podcasting so it can be an ongoing conversation. Um, maybe uh, I'm going to create a website, you know, Artful Heart website, but it's kind of my national and international initiative to create space and conversation and experiences around in really creative ways, reawakening the highest level of our humanity so that we can begin to treat each other differently, see each other, you know, more, more profoundly as human and vital and and precious. Um, So that, you know, that's a big part of my work. Um, I, uh, hmm? I'm looking forward to that because I feel like that's just what we need. And I think a lot of young people these days, I can speak for myself, are looking to make more connections that are heartfelt. Yeah. 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 And I really, really, I hope to be able to create a space that young folk are really comfortable in. We can really celebrate together and grow together. Um, I think that's really important. Um, committed to to painting more you know i i love to i love to create abstract art all my life i've kind of whenever i sing i always kind of see images or i see color i see shape and form and stuff and i had a really really great experience when i was like in the second grade um art teacher came into the classroom one day and and said just paint just create whatever you feel And, and i did that i remember i had these two paintings one was predominantly red and the other was predominantly blue and i was so excited about it and you know i just had never had such a powerful experience as just painting and creating you know these shapes and forms and they had to stay you know in the classroom and dry for a few days and i brought them home and and my parents they just they were like that's not art what is that that's not art the teacher said that was art and it kind of shut me down they didn't mean to hurt my feelings. they didn't know what they were saying but it really kind of shut me down but Years later, I was having a conversation with my wife and I said, you know, I feel a little bit like a hypocrite. This was like in 2015. I said, I feel a little bit like a hypocrite, you know. She said, what do you mean? I said, well, you know, I mean, I teach workshops and sem- seminars telling people, you know, just fully express yourself, you know, and, 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 and discover and, and, you know, and explore and express in all ways that you can. And I said, you know, I've, I've had this desire for years to, 
to paint again, but I had kind of an odd experience with it. And so I've kind of shut myself down. And she was like, well, unshut yourself, you know, let's go get some canvas and some paint and, and explore. And I did that that day. And it's just like kind of reawakened in me this whole beautiful, beautiful experience. It's kind of like my healing and my therapy to, to create art. This painting that you see behind me is one of my pieces of artwork. And, and it's just been a really powerful thing. And I love doing it. I oftentimes, you know, just create paintings and I just gift them. I just give them away. I love the experience. Um, but I, and, and I've done a couple of concerts where like I've, I've, I've set up canvas and, and, and paint and I, in the middle of the concert, I'll just keep singing and I'll just go paint, you know, I'll just create an image. And so, um, there are a couple of projects that I want to do. I want to do more of that. And I also want to do a series of paintings where I allow the painting to happen, but then, and I live into what, what the painting sounds like to me and create a piece of music to accompany each of the paintings and do a, do a gallery showing of that. So, Listen, you know, working I on that. wait for that particular concert. Like I'm going to be there. I just, <laughs> the fact that you're, you're bringing in like, you know, music, there's dance of course with music, but then you're bringing in art on top of that too. It's just, and then you're also engaging the audience because you're probably going to ask them to give you a word to make music. It's yep. just going to be, it's going to be the perfect like night out. It's, it's just going to be a really great time. So I can't wait for that. When I, when I, I, I was in a meditation a few weeks ago and, and I, I was kind of asking, you know, the universe, asking spirit, asking the creator, you know, what, what do I do? Where do I go from here? You know, I just, it's important for me to feel purposeful all the time. And, and, and I remember being asked the question, well, who are you? What's the sum total of you? you know? So I think if I take a look at kind of the sum total of, of Fred Johnson, you know, I'm an artist in many ways, you know, I, 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 I try to articulate life and love in creative, in artistic ways, whether it's music, whether it's theater, whether it's visual art. And, you know, I try to live in the spirit of the heart. And, and so hence this art, this artful heart experience, it's like, it's kind of the sum total of, of my way forward and and how to, you know, because um, one of the amazing things about the human animal is that we have the capacity to know beauty. And it feels to me like I'd like to continue to participate in creating opportunities for think of, for people to think about and act on manifesting beauty. If that's saying something beautifully kind to someone else, if that's, if that's remembering to, to look out at nature and be out in nature and breathe in the beauty of nature that, you know, that the creator has given us. If it's writing a song or a poem or taking a photograph or singing or humming a melody, you know, it's like to be manifestors and creators of beauty in heart-centered way. So for me, the artful heart is the sum total of those experiences and to, and to really, you know, be being uh, committed to creating spaces where we can do that. So, so yeah, and that for me, that's my future. What do I see for the future is that, is, is doing that, is, is creating m- musical, um, what I, what I've, you know, like, um, the the expansion for me because i've lived in the multicultural multi-faith world you know i think you know again the other day when i was trying to be guided to understand how to describe or what are the threads in the tapestry of the artful heart the, the 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 space of the artful heart is a space that is for inclusive consciousness does that make sense? In other words, not, you know, like we think in many ways, you know, this in, in, in inclusive consciousness for the greater good, you know? So basically a space for everybody to be their authentic selves. That's exactly. However, that's defined, you know what I mean? Um, in with the, with that, you know, head to heart mystical journey, you know, journey of like whatever the outcome We don't want to leave anyone behind. We don't want anyone to be excluded. We don't want anyone to be defaced or defamed. You know, it's for, it's a pathway. It's an inclusively conscious, creative pathway forward to manifest the, you know, beauty, to manifest love, to manifest wholeness, 
to manifest, you know, sustainability for the greater good of all of the human family and nature. Well, thank you so much, Fred. Uh, this was honestly amazing. And I know we're going to have to have you back, especially when we you get um, Art for Heart up and running. Mm -hmm. So we will definitely have Fred back. Um, if you enjoyed this, please leave a comment down below. And also check the description. I'm going to leave a link to all of Fred's information so you can find out more about him. And yeah, thank you so much, Fred. Oh, thank you for, for taking the time. It's really an honor. I appreciate it so much. Blessings to you. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching and have a great day.